I'm Anas, I'm from Chromologix. I'm one of the three co-founders and um, I'm very happy to be here today and tell you about our startup idea. At the moment, we're still a DTU project, but um, hopefully that'll change. Um, so we started off uh, three months ago at a conference where me and Garrett, my partner, we were drinking, having some beer, having some wine, and we thought of this great idea. We had this data that was really cool. We had some more wine and it got even better, and then we went dancing, and then the night ended. But the next morning, we still thought it was a good idea. Okay. So what are we? Um, we are a project and some people who at the moment can produce some colors that are natural, pure, and, and easy to use for the, con for, for the beverage and food industry. Um, there are, of course, a lot of colors already, but we're better. And, and the world is kind of moving towards healthy and health-minded, and everybody wants to know what's in their foods. Everyone's concerned that colors might affect you or your children, and, and that's why there's a focus on natural colors. Um, Nestle last year pledged to remove synthetic colors from, their compound, uh, from all their products. They want to go completely natural, and this year they, they actually succeeded. All your M&Ms and everything is now with natural colors and natural flavors. So, so and, and other companies like Kraft and, and what another have focused, followed this, and they want to have natural colors. Um, and quickly about some of the first generation or the, the conventional colors. So if you look in the be beverage industry, juices and Fanta and all these, they, they use a compound called beta-carotene, which has this very pretty color different colors, but it's, it's not very user-friendly. It's, it's a hydrophobic uh, core, and it's very, very hard to dissolve in water, making it very hard to dissolve in your juice and your, in your beverage. And they don't really like that. Ina Williamson, we talked to, they hate when they have to do Fanta stuff because they can't get it dissolved. The other main color in food is, karma, uh, is, is red, so um, sausages and pizzas and ice cream and all these things. And one of the major players in this is carmine. And uh, so this is actually a pH dependent, so it, it, it changes color. But, uh, and carmine is, is actually, the compound is very, very good. The problem is it's, it's extracted from lice, making most people go like this. When you figure out that what you're eating is lice or when your makeup is lice. Um, and actually, another problem with it coming from lice is it's not vegan friendly, it's not halal, and it's not kosher. And, at least the vegetarian community is very vocal, and they forced Starbucks to remove carmine from their products three years ago. And, and Starbucks now use lycopene, which is 10 times as expensive. So, I mean, that's, I mean, they have a voice, right? So getting back to us and what we can do, is we can offer these uh, different colors, and at the moment we're working on these red and orange colors, and they're really easy to use, they're really water soluble, and they have this clear color, and uh, and we can make it in high and low, uh, high yield, low cost. And when we compare ourselves gram per gram to Carmine, as I talked about before, we're, uh, we have a better product. Um, it's three times as intense, meaning you need three times less for, to color your food. And at stability testing we've tested so far, we, we are on par with them. Um, so how do we do it? We use this. Um, this filamentous fungi, it's a Danish fungi um, isolated 10 years ago at our institutes. And, and by using our, our knowledge and our, our process to grow them, they can make these colors. Um, and, and that's actually quite important because being from a fungus, it is vegan, kosher friendly and halal. And that actually opens the global market. So the Middle East at the moment, they only use artificial colors because there's not many natural colors that are actually halal friendly. So that's where we come in. And, and how we do it is we, we grow them in these bioreactors and then we harvest uh, the color. And these are the same systems that Evolva and Novo Nordisk and Novozymes use and the same type of process or fermentation process. And I mean, they have done this for many years. So, so, I mean, there's a lot of knowledge, and, and where we come from, we work with filamentous fungi, and I have a background from Novo using systems like this. 
so we kind of know the deal. Um, as I said, we were very young, started three months ago. Um, so these are very small milestones, but some of it was uh, a couple months ago, we reached this one gram per liter, which is like the, the breaking point of actually going forward with this. And now we've purified some of the compounds, and I think last week we were selected for Stardust program, and we initiated a collaboration with the Copenhagen Business School, where we have a, uh, five students making a business case out of our project. So that's really cool. We're working on the patent, where we expect to have a priority date in December. And then from there, we're looking forward to, to working with yields and tox. Um, and especially the toxicology is a big part of what we're looking for, funding for at least. Um, the team, so far we're three people. Um, there's me in the middle. I'm more of a biochemist who do the analysis. Uh, we have Gerrit, who is the expert in, in cultivating the fungus. And then we have Andreas, who is our business, business guy who started a couple of startups already, Biocynthia and Venomap, some of you might know. Um, and uh, I think that's it. Thank you for listening. <laughs>